Hello, my name is Dermajan, the host of Master of Your Crafts podcast. Learning from leaders who are continuously inspired, passionate, and driven to align with their soul purpose, sharing their gifts to bring healing to others. The music is composed by Rebecca Everett. Today is episode number 101, and I'll be talking to Ulrika Carson. Back in 2008, Ulrika was completely burnt out, deeply depressed, and suicidal. With only 15 minutes of sleep per night, she woke up at 2.47 from horrible nightmares and in complete panic. This led her to share her journey in her autobiography, 247, the journey home to your heart. Ruka came to a point where she had to choose between life and death. Today, she shares her experiences and embodied wisdom from her heart. With nearly 30 years of experience of traditional Western and Eastern holistic disciplines, Ulrika works with holistic health personal development, and inner leadership. Her work as a spiritual teacher, international author, public speaker, and yoga teacher. Therapists often take her around the globe to work with men and women of different ages from all walks of life. The essence of Ulrika's work is to increase consciousness and to guide you to your heart. Her upcoming book, The Sacred Soul, A Divine Evolution Through Time and Space, is also here to make a difference. One of her gifts is to help you transform old karma into flow, freedom, and being present with what is. Ulrika's vision is simple, to contribute to a more beautiful happier, a more conscious, loving world. Hello and welcome to Ulrika. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, Naranjan. We've just been talking here for 25 minutes, so we're <laughs> it's already the hearts are on and uh, we are on the same page. So I'm, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I am well and I'm excited to get into the details of this conversation. We do have a preamble, but that is a precursor for us to get to know each other a little bit deeper because um, to make these conversations more enriching and more engaging for others who are potentially looking for more greatness in their own life and how they can participate in that. So what do you believe about yourself and do you feel it defines who you are? Wow, that is a good question. I think that is like a question that you can explore your whole life Absolutely. and never be finished. Mm-hmm. Um, so I define myself as uh, a spiritual being having this human experience. Yeah. Obviously, I'm a single mom of two teenagers. Here in 3D, uh, I'm an author, I'm a yogi, and I'm an empath. I mean, that's pretty much sums me up in the definition here in in the matrix. Yeah. Well, we're (laughs) going to go on the matrix because the intention behind the podcast is those of us who are really entrenched in the matrix to be able to find that nugget of wisdom, that find that nugget of something that either you say, I say, or the guests say, that will help them recognize they're in the matrix. Exactly. Exactly. I I'm usually usually saying that because many, many years ago I was being depressed and suicidal and I listened to Oprah Winfrey at the time. And at the time there was one guy, I can't even remember who it was or what he or she said. I just remember that that day I did not commit suicide. 
So if there's like one word or one sentence that we say here that resonates with you who's listening and who's increasing the consciousness of you who's listening, then I have paid back. The circle is closed. And then I've sort of paid back uh, my karma regarding this matter. And then you had another question. So I just asked the fir- uh, I answer the first part of it. What was the other one? Do you feel it defines who you are? I feel it defines who I am here, <laughs> as we say in the matrix. And then I have more, you know, like titles or anything. But most of all, I'm being defined by my spiritual connection and by my big heart. And ultimately, I believe when we go through such tumultuous times and waning of life by oscillating with that decision of do I take my own life or not, that leads us to a path and a road of of self-love and of an element of opening this heart that has been, I don't want to say blocked, that has been closed around all of this armor that we build. So it calls for a huge heart opening. So I commend you for your journey and I honor you for your courage because I know it's not an easy fate. Thank you. No, it's not. I'm. I'm writing about it in my in my first book. I'm just going to show it to you. Like it's called 2:47 a.m. A journey home to my heart, where I very like raw and vulnerable share my inner darkness, my wounds, so the reader can use my darkness as a trampoline to dive into and explore their own if they want to. Obviously, because we always have that free choice. Because my personal and professional experience is that the more of our inner wounds and our inner traumas and suppressed emotions that we are witnessing, feeling, we are being able to transform. So we can transform these 95% of unconscious programs that we all have into more, more consciousness, into high states of consciousness. So that book aims to increase the reader's consciousness by encouraging them and inspiring them to go into their own darkness. Because the more darkness that I transform, the more access I have to my inner light. Absolutely. And nothing. What? What? Probably what we're going to say here. I mean, I mean, at least I is new to us. It's just that most of us has forgotten it. Because it's buried beneath layers and layers of unconscious programming. So nothing is new. But uh, the more you work with the unconsciousness and you transform it, the more access you have to your hidden gems and your hidden qualities and your hidden gifts. And then when you find your gift, then you can use it to share with others and help and inspire others. So uh, I... I also believe that sometimes we need to life give us these curveballs because we need to grow and we know that nothing happens in our comfort zone, right? That's right. There's no growth at all in the comfort zone. So we always need to stretch and to move out out of our comfort zone. It doesn't matter how it looks like if it's in a relationship or if it's a job or if it's your health or whatever you need. You need, we all need to do our inner work. Like there's nobody who can do it for us, right? That's right. So the aim of all this for me, the way I see it, is just, as you say so beautifully, to open our hearts even more, to open our hearts to who we are. Because when we are in our hearts, there's no competition, no comparison, these old paradigm, unconscious masculine programming. And then we can just be who we are, aligned with our soul's truest gifts. So this is what I, you know, I've been through and I've been prepared in my own journey for facing and navigating these times that we are all in. It's like we're all passing through the needle of the eye individually and collectively with the higher intention.
permission for us to come back, not to not to go where we haven't been, because to come back to our soul's origin, which has a high frequency from the beginning, like from the fifth and tenth dimension and above. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And what a beautiful gift that is for us to witness it, but also to recognize, hopefully, that there's more than what the matrix has presented. There is more, and it's only through the heart the sincerity, the integrity, and the sovereignty of the heart that we can get through that. And innately then feel that empowerment to to support others on this path. Exactly. So happiness is always an inside job and it's all, each and one of us, you know, we have a radical responsibility not only to ourselves, but, you know, also to our ancestors who didn't have the possibilities yep. that we have today to clear all this karmic shit. Sorry for the expression, but, but we can yeah. use the karmic shit as fertilizers for our spiritual growth. So we are the ones that we've been waiting for, each and one of us here. We come with a mission. And so we not only that we do is for ourselves and for clearing out the ancestral blood lineages, we also mm-hmm. do it for our children and the children to come mm-hmm. and for this planet. Because yeah. each and one of us, we are always like radio stations. We are always transmitting and we are always receiving. So we do both at the same time. And this is how energy works. Like it's always a flow of in and out, like yin and yang. Right day and night, feminine, masculine, etc. So energy cannot only go like one way. Like if I give too much of myself and if I'm not in my heart or in a grounded place, then I will be depleted. Mm-hmm. So um, the way energy works is that we have the opportunity to clear all this out because obviously we all have lived so many previous lifetimes yeah. and we have all this knowledge in ourselves i write about it in the holy fuck book that we all have it in ourselves however our cells and our inner water are so polluted by our stressful lives by our karmic choices that we have done and by our limited beliefs so what we need to do to to connect with the gems, to connect with the inner wisdom that resides in each and one of us instead of the inner shit Mm -hmm. is that Mm -hmm. to to clear out and to transform on a cellular level, like our DNA, our inner sacred water is so polluted. And most of us, we are not even aware of it. Yes. Right. So it really has to be like for my myself, my own personal journey. It was really in my in my face, like, yes. oh, this is your life. This is what it looks like. It sucks. You're depressed. You are, you know, being suicidal. And so it takes courage, first of all, to to navigate through all of these programming that we have and to choose drift differently. So. Courage also comes from the world la coeur. I know that you in Canada speaks, um, many of you speak French, so the word heart. So the word courage comes from being, you know, a heart-centered word. But uh, that is what, what is going on in the world today also. It is in our face, so we can observe it, we can witness it, we can think, hmm, does this resonate with me or not? And only when we are aware of it, when we are conscious of it, we can change the unconscious. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as an add-on to that, one thing that I have witnessed, not only for myself, but others on this journey as well, is the more uncomfortable you are, the higher the opportunity for you to transform. Exactly. So the more uncomfortable life gets for you, you're at the peak of opportunity to make that transition into something that will fuel you and feed your heart and your soul and your spirit 
on a way deeper level than what we can actually fathom on this conscious, in our conscious mind. Exactly. That is so true. And again, that's why it takes courage to Mm -hmm. be in the, because like for myself personally, these last two and a half years has been very, you know, uh, I've been censored, I've been bullied, I've been discriminated. And and still here I am, you know, just talking my truth. And I'm just like a single mom with two teenagers. I'm nothing special. I'm just energy. I'm just energy, a spiritual being with a spiritual mission. So, and I, obviously I didn't always know about it. I was being depressed. I was being separated from soul, separated from spirit. And I was living in my programs. Uh, but um and I, I feel that there was, when I, at my worst time, when I wanted to commit suicide, there was this spark in me, this, this spark that didn't allow me to commit suicide because I, you know, I, I could have, I tried to commit suicide many times, <laughs> but I failed, right? So that means that I wasn't done here yet. And that means that there was something in me that kept sort of nagging me and I didn't know what it was it scared the hell out of me Uh, I thought I was going insane like I was going to be bipolar or even more depressed I didn't know what it was but then this spark this god spark and not god like like in the religious sense Mm -hmm. but the god spark as in the, the, the divinity from divine source which we all are from that spark is so much stronger than our egos, even though that our egos are, because our egos are here to keep us safe. That is the ego's job. But the soul's job is here to make us grow and evolve. So it's two totally different perspectives. But uh, if you follow, you know, the intuition, if you follow the spark, if you follow, as you said, the, the harder it gets, the more possibility you have to evolve and just do it, then you will find you. And everything that we are looking for in the outer realms, we're looking for acknowledgements, for love, relationship, for money, for being included. So it's like we are looking in the wrong places for the wrong things. And the more I want to experience Expand outwardly, the more I want to expand, the higher I want to ascend, the more I need to expand within me and the deeper I need to go mm-hmm. within me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so many, as a yogi, so many of us are only working on the ascending masculine flow. We yes, want to be yeah. enlightened, we want to climb our career, we, we can hear it in our language, we want to mm-hmm. move mm-hmm. forward. Yes. Like, Yes, but if I want to move forward, then I also need to move backwards or clear my past. Yes. So we need to, as a yogi, I'm working a lot with, with not only the ascending flow, but also the descending flow, the descending flow, the feminine flow to connect into our hearts, into our chakras, into our root, into our bodies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There needs to be an element of balance that truly creates everything that we do. So as we, as you've correctly said, there's there's this yearning and desire for us to reach higher light above our heads and reach for the gods, if you will. But it's equally important for us to reach into the core of the earth on the underground, because it's only through balance, because we live in a polarity world. There is night, there's dark, there's black, there's white, there's sweet, there's sour. We live in this world. So as beings of light and body in here, we've got to have that balance. As high as we go, we've got to go as, as deep and as low too. Exactly. And that, that is the, the magical trick of being human is to create balance in life. Exactly. And it's like a tree, like an old oak tree. First, Mm -hmm. it has its, you know, big branch of roots down connected to to Mother Earth. 
birth to Gaia. And and we, we shall not forget that Gaia is, you know, right. is a source of infinite wis- wisdom too. Yes. She's like the big mother, the big nurturing energy. Uh, so it's not only that the planets and the star systems out there are full of wisdom and energetic wisdom and also Gaia. And we are children of Gaia. This means that right. the wisdom of Gaia also resides in each and one of us. So like an old oak tree, first the branching and the big roots need to take place. And then, so the greater the roots, the greater the, how do you say, the the tree crown. And it's the same with our, like, chakra system. So there's so many people, like, in my world that are yogis or psychic or, and they are only, you know, in the ascending masculine flow and and only what I call in a mental spirituality, because the spirituality is not grounded. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So, so we need to ground the, the energetic flow of the feminine and the masculine, and they connect in the heart. And if I have no roots, then I won't have any hearts. Right. right. It's like the tilting tower of Pisa. The tilting tower of Pisa is a building that is, that is unbalanced. Mm -hmm. And this is how we as human beings also have been unconsciously living our lives for thousands of years, Mm -hmm. unbalanced, and we need to come back into balance, as you said. Absolutely. What do you feel is your calling in, or perhaps one of your callings in this life as you've gone through so much and as you're still going through so much? What do you feel is one of the pivotal pieces for now? I know that I am here because because I do like karma clearings, soul readings in the Akashic Record. And when I did my own many, many years ago, uh, I realized that I have two so-called God sparks, meaning that I have two really strong lines connection to source in this modality. And people with two God sparks, they are here to make a difference, not only for themselves, but trust me, when you make a difference for yourself, you also make a difference for others. Right. But so people with, with, with two God sparks in this modality, they are here for aiding humanity in one way or another. And I know that I'm here to aid people into their hearts and to uh, increase level of consciousness. So my gifts are that I'm really good at seeing frozen emotion in people and to help them clear that old shit out and also to help clear out the the karmic programs, the unconscious programs that we all have. So I know that I'm here for this ascension process. This is what I'm here for. Mm. What a beautiful gift. And I find that more and more people that I speak to in this realm and even for myself and my peers and mentors, that ultimately when we get to this space, we're all here doing the same thing. We are. So while the terminology, the nuances, uh, perhaps some of the principles might differ very acutely, the fundamentals of why we're here, and we've chosen to be here to take on this huge feat to embody more love and create a safe place for people to be vulnerable and open up their hearts is all of the same. So have you seen that shift expand over the last at least couple of years? Not so much as I would have expected because it it, it is very painful to wake up from from your own slumber or from your depression or from your limited beliefs it is very painful to wake up and to find that 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 we are truly living like in the matrix movies and and most of us are not not even aware so we're running around in a rat race and we're putting our energy you know we want to have new breasts new lips new cell phones Mm -hmm. new kitchens And we are like divine creators and we put so much energy into all this bullshit. Mm. So, and I know everything happens in divine order and divine interference and things like this, but 
I'm a Pitta personality. I know that you're uh, mm-hmm. originating from uh, I- India, as you told me. So I'm very, as a yogi, also familiar with yogic traditions and Ayurveda. So I have a lot of fire and also have a lot of water. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> it's really because it's, it's not, it doesn't fe- feel like it's fair because first you have done your own shitty journey, you know, <laughs> to, to, to be who you are and to, to clear out your ancestral lineages and to, to provide safety for your children and to, you know, transform yeah. like uh-huh. seven generations back and seven generations forth. That's right. And then you have to participate in people who, who are not doing that. <laughs> people who are not trying to take their radical responsibility, but people who does what everybody else is doing or can't think for themselves. or pe- So it's very frustrating. It's like, ah, oh, yes, please. And then, a- yeah. and then we're assisting the collective because then there's a collective energy that needs support in their transition as well to lift everybody who hasn't, or maybe not willing to look at it for themselves, but energetically exactly. we're having to lift all that too. Exactly. And we just had election here in Sweden. Mm. And it was like, it was like a joke, to be honest, because first of all, many of the so-called leaders here, they are not even elected by the people. And you know, that you can sit there and you can sit there for eight years and you cannot, you can sit there without doing anything and you still get your salary for the rest of your life. And then it was like, they don't even ask the people, right? We were, so they took decisions over our head to to join NATO. Mm. They've taken decisions over our head to, um, to build 5G. We didn't have anything to say about it. And then in this election, they didn't ask like, oh, what do you people, what do you want? What do you, what do you think we should, you know, what is it important? It's like, we want more parking spaces and we want to do this. And it's like, but we still have to consider nature. And I'm like, what? It was like a joke. So it's like, and this is interesting. I just want to say this like a small um, within. Um, Disclaimer. Yes. The word government means governing <laughs> is control and meant yes. is mind. So the word is originally mind control. And this I is what is, it, yeah. Okay. So um, it was just like a big joke. And, and so I'm, my heart and my soul and my is longing for, you know, like quicker changes. And again, I know there's no quick fixes and everybody has their own journey and divine timing. But it feels like this is, yeah, it feels like a never-ending story. But I know, I know that we all who choose this freely to go there, we will all, you know, come out on the other side uh, as better versions of ourselves. And as Absolutely. you said, many people don't want to look at themselves, so they won't join us on this journey of evolution. Absolutely. But for those of you who choose to do so, we all make it. We will all have our individual challenges to go through. And then from there on, we will, you know, move empowered and more state of being free and sovereign. So you've referenced a number of times the courage that it takes to take this path and to step into a journey of something outside of the matrix. And it doesn't need to be you know, the sky's open and you hear the angels roar or anything like that. It could be just a little shift here that allows you to think in a different way or look at something from a different perspective or really feel into the words or the attributes of what's actually happening out there. What do you feel and from your experiences have been some of the attributes that really connect you to your purpose. Love, love and empathy, obviously. And for me, I don't see it like, this is so important to really stress that it's not like I feel that I am above anybody else, though I have another perspective or a higher state mm-hmm. of consciousness. So it's not like I'm above because that's the old way that we've that's seen right. through thousands and thousands of years. 
I see that we are all equal with our, as I, uh, as I was just saying, our individual paths and our individual callings. Not all of us can be authors and spiritual te teachers, right? Some of us really have to, you know, take care of the soil and to provide food for us. And some people have to drive the bus or the tube that they're feeling passionate about so we can come safe to our family or our jobs. Mm -hmm. But each and one of us have our own unique assignments, each and one of us, and how that assignment looks like, it differs. But so regardless of, regardless of like your unique assignment, it takes courage, as we've mm -hmm. already said, to, to open that restaurant, you know, in these turbulent times, to, to stand up for yourself, for your children, or whatever you do, that is aligned with who you are at the soul level. So it doesn't have to be, as you said, like big steps and not everybody is, you know, um, teachers, but mm -hmm. we are all teachers and we are all students and we are all equal. So that Absolutely. is so important to stress. Like we all have our dis different, uh, I'm lousy at tech stuff and, and I, you know, I'm lousy at uh, fixing my car. So we need everybody. Everybody has their purpose. But if we do not have the courage to follow our purpose or our passion, then who are we serving? Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. And it's stepping into that uncomfortable zone. What do you feel are some of your intentions? as you embark on this path on a deeper level, as each day unfolds on a deeper and deeper level? My intention for myself personally is to be the better version of myself, the best version of myself that I can be. And like each and one of us, we are the result, we are the sum you know, of all previous versions of ourselves, of all experiences that we have done, of all the lessons learned, and I believe that we are never truly sort of finished because there are more layers to explore. There are more heights to explore. There are more gifts to explore. And um, so my intention is always to follow my heart because you can't go back, right? You, yeah. you can never be who you were. And Sometimes I'm wishing that my soul would have chosen an easier path for me. It's like, oh gosh, why, why, how, can, what, what was I thinking? Like, you know, because it's not easy. It's not like sitting in, in a meditation pose and everything is just a bliss and you just go, yes. no. Yes. So sometimes I'm like, oh gosh, I'm so, I'm so tired. So I'm, I'm really tired and I sometimes, you know, I felt so alone and isolated in these mm -hmm. years also, mm -hmm. being bullied and discriminated. And, you know, I've, I've had a salary since I don't know when. I'm living on my savings. But then again, I'm, I feel like, you know, I'm free. I'm free to be me. I'm free to do what I like when I like it, with who I like it. I don't have a boss telling me what to do or when to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so freedom is so important for me, the essence of being free and not only being free who I am, but also free, you know, to, to use my words, free to write, free to, to be me in all aspects of life. Like <laughs> I love it most when I'm, totally naked on a beach just me and the elements and you know um yeah and then my intention is also to to bring my best version of myself to to guide you know others that feels that they resonate with me but obviously I do this, this journey for myself and for the sake of my children. And then if I help anybody else, that is just a bonus. Yes. Yes. And I'm sure those who have worked with you, connect with, with you, read your books, are in deep gratitude 
for all that you have done, all that you are doing courageously, and all that is yet to come, and that will unfold, um, being tested through all the challenges that life brings, also known as gifts, but they don't feel like gifts when we're stuck in the middle of the challenge, but they ultimately are. Exactly. So Mm. challenges are disguised gifts mm-hmm. Absolutely. and and I feel that all of us that are on the same mission as you and I um, mm. being like acupuncture needles you in Toronto yes. and I'm in Stockholm in Sweden holding the space holding the energy really we don't have to do anything we just have to be uh, and so our light like I'm from a planet called Vega mm. Uh, and uh, vegans are here to inspire and to to inspire you cannot only do it on a mental level as we were talking about earlier you have to do it from you know from yourself from your own experience because that's from your experience that other people can relate to or resonate with Mm -hmm. so I know that I'm here to inspire and I know that that this inspiration might also sometimes look as as a challenge for those who come to see us right absolutely, absolutely. that's the but disguise all, gift but it's all in great purpose it's it is all for a greater purpose it if is. we can keep the eye on the prize so to speak then exactly then we'll all nudge along just nicely and in a state of leading into that trust which it sounds like you have been doing for many years so thank you thank you and I also want to say and I want to add like we know that we are energetic beings and we know that energy never dies it just takes Mm -hmm. different shapes and forms so by this said we know that we all have lived many many lives before so not only do we have to heal our ancestral lines we also have to heal you know previous lifetimes and we all have this is this is like such an important message that i share in my books and that i share with you here today and Mm -hmm. anytime that i have the opportunity we are all part of the mess that we are seeing we are all part of this mess that we are seeing because we have all participated in it consciously or unconsciously in this lifetime or most likely in previous lifetimes because we have all all of us have killed somebody all of us have been killed in previous lifetimes so we have all been the perpetrators and we have all been the victims and from this unconscious energy of these programs that are running of being the perpetrator or being the victim this unconscious energy transmits from me Mm -hmm. out there into the collective consciousness so that's why it's so important that i have to clear out that i have to clean myself i have to cleanse my polluted water my Mm -hmm. cellular memory my dna Mm -hmm. so that i can transmit from another space so it's not like It is them who are to blame for the mess that we see today. It's not the politicians. It's not the church. We are part of it. Yes. And that's why we have to take the radical responsibility to to dare to look at all these painful insights that I am part of this mess. But the good thing is, if I'm a part of it, then I can recreate it. But I have to become aware of it first. I have to become conscious of it first so i can transform it and we all have been witches Mm -hmm. burned at stakes Mm -hmm. in those lifetimes so we have all these memories that are lingering in our our dna as an add-on to that and i i agree with what you're saying and i echo the sentiments i believe and have witnessed the same principles that you're talking about because yeah we're on the same page on a whole different level In addition to the clearing of all the heaviness and the toxicity that we have in life, perhaps as people hear this interview, the eye on the prize could be just as heavy and as deep and as toxic as this environment is. The eye on the prize is the positive aspects of what we have gained through previous lifetimes 
through previous dimensions, through our lineage, because in every single experience, there is a negative aspect and there is a positive. But exactly. one thing that I have recognized and witnessed for sure is when we have transformed the energy of the negative, we are then left with a positive. Exactly. Exactly. And that's I, the eye on the prize. Exactly. I totally agree. But most of us, we don't have access to that prize because there's so much shit on top of layers and layers and layers and layers and layers. So it's like, it's like you have this garden full of weeds. You have this beautiful mm -hmm. garden, but it's full of weeds and you want to do something differently with the garden. So first you need to pull the, the plants with the roots, with the weeds right. up, and then you can plant the new seed. So it's like you're saying, first we have to transform all these inner shit, the karmic shit, the unresolved emotions, traumas, the, the things that we are not even aware that we are carrying. And yes. then we are left with the gems. We are left with the treasure of, of the knowledge and the wisdom that has been passed forward through each generation and through each lifetime. It is like this beautiful, beautiful treasure box with jewels and diamonds or the prize or the metaphor, whatever. And that is you. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So that is so, uh, that is so powerful. And I truly believe that we have so many more gifts to explore that we are not even aware of. Right. I have, I have a very special connection with water. Yes, like me too. just by sitting here and talking, my inner water is moving mm. and I can have like a Fontaine orgasm mm. just, you know, to, to be here nothing sexual mm -hmm. about it and with this water comes a lot of codes and information mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh yes. that's yeah it. and that is the opportunity and that is what gets me excited about tapping into the unseen world but really being able to utilize and transform energy exactly, exactly. and really be true alchemists yes and that is what we are. Yeah. That is what each and one of us are, but we have to follow that path. Yes. Absolutely. And and when you have transformed all of these things, not only you gain knowledge, you gain the embodied wisdom. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And and um, yeah, I love to be this alchemy and to explore and I'm 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 sure, you know, that we have just scrapped the surface because if we are, like I'm writing about in this book, the sacred soul, a divine evolution through time and space, uh, like the soul's perspective on what is going on in the world today. And I feel that we have only scratched the surface of our abilities and our mm -hmm. gifts, like telepathy, yes. uh, moving things just by yeah. intention, and maybe I know the technology that the med beds are already here, but what right. if we are the med beds, like each yes. and one of us? Yes. Yeah, I love that. And I think as cliche as this may sound, the possibilities truly are endless. It is. It is. And just, you know, you have to shovel a bit of dirt. <laughs> You have to shovel a bit of the inner shit and use the shit as a fertilizer for mm. your personal and your spiritual growth. Absolutely. And I, I know that I'm here for this and I know that you are too and we all are. We are all here to become the best versions of ourselves. And... It feels like a pretty lonely journey while you're there, right? But there are yes. always people who have done the journey before you, people who have, you know, walked the path, people who are there, here to help mm -hmm. you, to aid you. And, and we don't have to do anything by ourselves anymore because mm -hmm. that's also the old energy, not to ask for help or to trying to think that I have to solve or do anything myself. That is the old energy. 
-hmm. because uh, we can't do anything by ourselves. We need each Mm -hmm. other. I need, Mm -hmm. I need uh, you who, you know, Mm -hmm. who transport, transport me to my job. I need, I need you who takes care of mother earth and gives me nourishments. So we need each other. And this is also something that we have been programmed, you know, for many, many years that we are separated, separated from ourselves, separated from our hearts, from our souls, separated from others, separated from spirituality. So people think that being religious and spiritual is the same thing for me. It's not it's like you can be very, very religious and not being spiritual and you can be very spiritual without being religious Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're very they're very different topics absolutely there is so much and I could continue this conversation and maybe there will be a part two somewhere down the road I'm looking forward for that because in some podcasts I'm actually on like five or six times and every time you know we're peeling down and going deeper and deeper so I that would be so great Naranja Perhaps one day we will we will continue this conversation and trusting that the content that you have shared so openly, so courageously of your path, your journey, really does seed and support other individuals who are perhaps oscillating with what's going on in life and why they're here and all these heavy, deep um, aspects of life. So thank you so much for sharing. I honor your journey, your path, and trust that whomever needs to hear it will. So thank you. Thank you. So I just want to finish with, uh, it takes one to know one. So thank you. you. And I also want to say like the people who are listening. So where do you start? Where do you start? For me, it starts with a breath. In Swedish, the word for the breath is andetag. And that literally means to connect with spirit. Because many people who are stressed have a very poor or limited or restricted breathing. So start with your breath. And your breath will take you into your inner universe and your inner landscape. And the breath is the bridge of the unconscious and unconscious. And then secondly, if you are in a place where you feel that you're depressed or in a dark space, one could think that the word depressed also can mean or being translated into deep rest. Mm. So a deep rest for body, mind, and soul for your growth. So you're actually like a seed that is being planted. Beautiful. I love those. I love those. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for listening. I'm Naranjan, and you've been listening to Master of Your Crafts podcast, Please subscribe, rate, and review, and join me next week for another episode. Thank you for listening.